What is up, YouTube? This is your boy Connor here, back on the G Money Zero Four One Channel. Welcome, 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 welcome. Coming at you with a little bit of a kind of special video. I thought I would do this because I saw a video the other day on Ray Ray's channel. My homie, the real Ray Ray Twenty, whatever. I just call him Ray Ray. That's my boy. That's my Canadian brother. Shout out to you, man. I saw a video on his channel the other day, ladies and gentlemen. And also shout out to Asian Joe because I forgot to shout him out in my last video and he made fun of me at that for that so shout him out. But I saw a video he made the other day and he was talking about his most rare sneakers in his collection. Now, I saw that video and I said to myself, Ray Ray, if you are going to put out a video of your rare sneakers, I should put out a video of my rare sneakers. So, this video here is going to be my five rare sneakers in the G Money personal collection. Now, how I did this video in terms of how I judged whether or not a shoe was rare or not, one, I didn't want to base it on the fact that I don't see a lot of these online. Most of these shoes are very hard to find because they're rare. And two, when we're talking about these shoes, uh, most of these actually have a production number. So when I was thinking about rare sneakers, I wasn't thinking about oh, these are the hardest to find or these are the most difficult to find, things like that, because I have a lot of older sneakers that were much more difficult to find than the ones I have, but they're not as rare. So I wanted to do this by a, a quantitative basis, to use a scientific term. So we went by the number metrics here, how many shoes were produced. If there was an exact number of shoes produced, if I don't know that, at least I have a basis for calling it a rare shoe because of extenuating circumstances and we'll get into that with this video so let the countdown begin off this list here at number five we have got one of my favorite shoes in my collection personally we have got the heineken dunk highs now while these are not nearly as limited as the heineken dunk lows due to the heineken dunk lows being actually having a trademark problem thusly having to be taken off of shelves and out of stores and things like that and not many were sold also back in the era when sbs were super limited this shoe right here was a mainly european release shoe now i don't have a specific production number on these shoes and that kind of sucks that said this is one of the rarest shoes in my collection simply because very few shops in the U.S. got them. And I'm, when I'm saying very few, only a very few. Most of the shops in America got the Budweiser as this was part of a two-pack with the Budweiser's and the Heineken Dunk Highs. The Budweiser Dunk Highs, which I also have in my collection, I'm looking at right now, and you can see out of the corner of my eye. Those had a much larger production run in the few thousands. Not, nothing re like a regular Quick Strike, not super crazy. These, however, being a mainly European release shoe, just so they could avoid any possible trademark violations like they did last time. These shoes are much harder to come by. I got very lucky when I got these. I got these for a really good price. I think I got them for like 150 shipped. And I also got them out around the same time as I got the Budweiser. So very happy to have these. So at number five, rarest shoe in my collection, we have had the Heineken Dunk High, a European release only. Number four, we have got easily one of my favorite shoes of all time. And some of you are going to be shocked to see this, you know, sort of far down on this list because this is one of my favorite shoes ever made. However, when we're talking about rare shoes, this shoe compared to the next three on my list, nowhere near as rare. These are the Reebok Question times Bait Snake Skins. As you know, the Reebok Question, one of my favorite models of shoe. Uh, Bait, my favorite collaboration shop. Shout out to Bait, love y'all. Haven't gotten any recently, but that's mainly because of money, not because of the fact that I couldn't get it. Except for the oysters, couldn't get those, kind of sucked. That would have been, if I had gotten those, that would have been in my, that would have been number one on this list if I had gotten the oysters, but unfortunately, don't have them in my collection. Eventually, eventually I'll have them. But, that said, this shoe was produced in the couple thousand range. This was the first bait shoe I got. This shoe... Uh, I think the production what number was around 2,000 pairs of these were made, making it a pretty limited shoe in today's market. Easily one of the best shoes in my collection. This is actually a pair that I have never worn. They're still completely dead sock. So, uh, the, mid, the whole midsole goes on the shoe. You got a smoky outsole. You got this great snakeskin upper, patent leather, awesome suede. One of my favorite shoes ever made, but... When you're comparing it to the next three on the list, again, as in terms of rarity, the next three on this list are way more rare than this one shoe, even though this is my favorite shoe of all time. So, at number four, Reebok Question times Bait, Snake Skins. Right smack dab at number three, 
of this list. We have the Slayer Dunk Highs by Nike SB and Brooklyn Projects. This was a collab shoe that came out, I believe, in 2011. You can correct me on that if I'm wrong. I believe this was 2011, maybe 10 when these came out. Uh, these were a collaboration with the Skate Shop Brooklyn Projects, which is down here in Southern California. Been to them many times. Shout out to them. Great people. Always have, always have a good time dropping it up when I go down there. But this shoe is one of the rare Nike SBs made in the last few years. Uh, this shoe is rumored to have a run of around 666 in terms of the Brooklyn Projects release shoe. Um, I doubt that number. However, from what I have read, there it, this was an extraordinarily limited shoe. It's very hard to find these in good condition. It's very hard to find these in a... Uh, dead stock fashion which I did and this actually shoe means a lot to me this was my first ever like Nike SB shoe that I ever bought so I tend to believe the legends maybe it isn't the rarest shoe in terms of the uh, GR release however these ones are the Brooklyn projects release shoe so if we're going by legend there's a, there were only 666 pairs pa uh, of these released via Brooklyn projects which is one of these shoes so Coming at number three with only 666 pairs released, the Brooklyn Project times Nike SB Dunk High Slayers. Coming in at number two with a verifiable number of pairs at 504, we have got the Bait times Onitsuka Tigers 5200 feet. These were made also with the uh, skate brand Accomplice, streetwear brand, skate brand, whatever you want to call them. This shoe was released back in, I believe, 2000. Early 2013, late 2012. They were released right after the uh, bait shoes. These have a verifiable number of 504. This pair is number 404 out of that 504. One of the cool things that bait did is because these are based off of like the ski slopes in uh, Colorado, which is where Accomplice is from, they actually gave you like a quote unquote lift ticket with each shoe. This pair with a number on each one so number 404 uh, I'm hoping to get a second pair of these I really hope I can in the near future I really love this shoe and I really like to wear it that said um, this pair is still completely dead stock because I don't want to wear a shoe this rare I know I have that problem if a shoe's super rare I don't want to wear it but at the same time I really want to wear it so hopefully I can get a second pair of these and wear them they aren't actually that expensive so oh well coming in at number two enough of the jibber jabber again the bait times accomplice times Onitsuka Tiger 5,200 feet with four, with 504 pairs of this shoe made. And now for my number one rarest shoe in my collection, we have got a shoe that one I feel very blessed to have, and two has a great story. So I'm going to tell you. I know this video is going long already, but I think this is a good story. So going into the shoe, sneakers and stuff times a6 gt2 seventh seal my number one rare shoe in my collection this shoe ladies and gents man it has very few pairs this shoe has i believe between 120 and 150 pairs ever released to the public already that is an insane amount however this pair right here i do not know how many are made and I'll explain why. This shoe has a problem, not because of how rare it is or because there's fakes in the market. There actually aren't fakes in the market really for this shoe. The problem with this shoe is it was a shoe that was made that had a lot, that had two big mistakes. And the mistakes on the shoe are, deal with this right here and this right here. So. On most of the pairs of shoes, it's supposed to be white, as white as this, or as white as this. It's a white backing on those pieces. However, only 120 some pairs of those shoes had white backings. The rest of those pairs had a light blue backing, which is actually what I have on my shoe. All of those pairs were destroyed by ASICs because they didn't meet up to the standards of uh, sneakers and stuff and sneakers and stuff refused to release them which they shouldn't as it was made by a mistake on the part of ASICs. So ASICs destroyed all his pairs except for one pair. 
which they had at their employee store at the time that I went there to apply for a job. I went in there, met with their one of their guys. They told me, why don't you go to the employee store now that you're done and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right. So I went down there, talked to the guy in the employee store, and he said, hey, let me look in back and see if we have any pairs. Went through the shelves and he brought back out this. Now, I didn't know the story of these. Didn't know the story of these. Came out there, saw I saw that they had an S and S on the logo. I went, oh my god, I gotta get them. I love sneakers and stuff. So picked them up, went home, researched them because I didn't know the name, I didn't know anything about it, knew there would be some information online, and that's when I found out how rare these are. And not only how rare these are, but the fact that this pair right here was a pair that was literally at Asics that was supposed to be destroyed, and yet they sold it to me for forty bucks. $40. I have one of the rarest ASICs you will ever see released in, never released to the public due to a factory error that somehow survived at ASICs. The whole story of these makes me so happy, but the fact that I got a pair that literally should not exist, I don't know how many are out there. The number is probably a little bit higher than the 100 pairs however there might it might even be less because most most if not all those pairs were supposed to be destroyed from a6 for 40 dollars on sale with the employee discount because the guy really liked me because i knew so much about a6 ladies and gents i present to you the rarest shoe in my collection the sneakers and stuff times a6 gt2 seven seals and with that Thank you all for watching. I know this is a long video, but I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed making it. So, with that said, again, thank you for watching. This is me, your boy, Connor Gary, a.k.a. The G Money 41 Like the video, comment on the video, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. And, yeah, so, with that, you know how I love to end my videos. Gotta hit y'all with the... Peace.